Now normally I drive if we go out for a Sunday morning ride. But now I'm gonna let Vera drive. Oh, let me get in. Oh, this is all right. Okay. Maybe I should buckle up. But I wanted to make a a little video clip here of driving around in our area. And Vera doesn't want to do that, so she needs to drive, and I can use my cell phone. You better be careful, those tires are really, really bad on wet roads. Now we got our discovery now, probably four years, I would think. Five, where is this? Five. And uh, we bought it with 115 kilometers, 115,000 on the clock. And it was um, actually nine or 10 years old already back then, I think nine years. I sold the C-Class Mercedes, which was nine years, and I bought for a lot more money a Discovery, which was nine years, and uh, it just had a few less kilometers on it. And since then, um, we've been driving it, so we have now, I think, 200-something on it, so 90,000 at least we put on the clock, and it is just a very, very comfortable riding car. Yes, you can turn here. Yeah, it's very, very comfortable. We we like it very much. We took it to a lot of vacations. We drove very little off road with it, but um, it it just drives so nice, and it is very, very big on the inside, and the kids like it back there. So I would absolutely recommend a vehicle like this, especially in Germany, because it's so extremely cheap to get for such a large SUV in a, in a luxury class. Um, they run around 10,000 euros right now um, with about 160,000 kilometers on it. And the spare parts are extremely cheap and very available. Um, even the most exotic spare parts are available um, out of the UK for 12 euro or 14 euro shipment. Um, so I almost never ever have to go to a dealership and this takes me to the point um, what is most important when you consider buying a Land Rover or even a Discovery is you have to stay away from the Land Rover dealerships and service shops. This is the mandatory point to drive this car low cost. Like I said, cheap parts the car is actually kind of easy to fix too, um, with some basic knowledge. It, it's way better than its reputation. Um, it does have some flaws and it breaks. And if you take it into a dealership to fix one of those flaws, um, every repair is at least a thousand euros. And some of them, some flaw repairs are up to three and four thousand euros. That's why the car is so cheap at the end to purchase on the market because people are not willing or maybe able today to fix certain things um, on vehicles. And this makes this an unaffordable vehicle because they would be driving an old car, um, 10 years and older, and uh, having repairs every two months, spending thousands and thousands of euros. So knowing this, this is the perfect car for somebody who can do work on a car. And um, that makes it very, very affordable and very competitive. And this is why I recommend it. If you're not able to fix this car and you don't have anyone to take care of it, um, and it's old and it has 150,000 kilometers or more on it, you gotta keep your hands off it. It will break on you. Um, almost all things break reliable. They break reliable almost by 10,000 kilometers. You can turn your clock or your speedometer to show you when it's gonna break. And the repairs are all very known. 
and easy to find instructions on YouTube. There's so many people making good YouTube videos on how to fix uh, discoveries and also some making real funny videos. Really funny to watch how they screw up and uh, they honest and they show it. So you even can look how not to do it. They show you how not to do it. And uh, it's very enjoyable. You can only recommend it. Just when I stopped the camera, Vera said, it does break every two months. Well, every six months maybe, to months. I think it breaks every, well, I don't know. Well, an old chain, oil change or a differential oil change that doesn't, doesn't count. count. That doesn't count. But every two yeah. months is, is about accurate. It does, it doesn't feel much because the repairs, if you don't let them collect, or add up or sum up, um, they're really not difficult and, and we kind of enjoy repairing them. Sometimes I tell my friend, well, hopefully something is gonna break soon or I'm gonna start working on something which isn't broke. And that's normally turning out expensive. So if this thing breaks, I can order the parts, fix it, and we usually have a good time. It normally works really well. And uh, just to name a few of the, the big problems of the Discovery and all years, almost all years have that is the uh, front lower suspension arms is one of the bigger ones. We have now the second set of front lower suspension arms in this car and we got it only 90,000 kilometers. The first set we put in, I was kind of cheap and didn't buy original parts and the, uh, the lower front Rear suspension bushings on the front arms um, wore out again and then the car doesn't handle right. So this time um, we put in all new arms front and back so a total of eight suspension arms with all bushings and ball joints and everything and we bought most of that stuff in England um, aftermarket but we bought the heavy duty setup um, from the Ahmed vehicle and it was a total of, I think, 700 euros for a complete new suspension system, excluding shocks. And installing this was about three days of work where the car didn't, absolutely didn't run. And uh, we did some other stuff too, like some paint repairs and whatever you do when you, when you do a repair like this. So that was one of the bigger ones. We've done this twice. Um, anybody having more than a hundred thousand kilometers on it no matter if country or autobahn or no matter what they tell you it will have nearly worn out lower suspension arm joints on the rear joints from the lower arm it's easy to see also when you buy it if they worn out you got to take some sort of a um, some sort of a crowbar with you and lever in there and you can see it they completely gone after a hundred thousand then the next thing is if you got a built year between 2006 and 2008 you may have the weak the weakened oil pump and the weak oil pump basically um, causes to fail not the pump itself the pump housing breaks off a, a tap and to that tap there is a pulley wheel mounted um, tensioning it's actually the tensioner of the of the um, timing belt so once this pulley wheel breaks off you got a complete wrecked motor and you need a new one and uh, doing a motor swap on this car is not the easiest thing in the world because it's a body off repair and it should be avoided at all cost because it's a reliable motor and it won't break if you keep it maintained but um, this means you got to get rid of that oil pump and put a reinforced oil pump in. There is a good manufacturer in Turkey making them. There's also, it's also available in England. And it's about a 160 euro item, 180. And the install requires a couple of, uh, a couple of extra gaskets and stuff. It's basically the same repair as required for the timing belt change, which is due at 160,000 kilometers. And we've done that one twice um, because whenever we touched stuff around the timing belt, 
I just put in a new timing belt because it's only like 40 euros and I didn't want to install a used one. You don't see that the belt wears. It, uh, it just doesn't show any signs of wear and tear like you would expect. It always looks like new, but at one point um, it can snap and the repair is with like with every timing belt, the, the engine is wrecked. So doing the oil pump and timing belt and some of the, the tensioner pulley, for example, and also some of the um, pulleys involved in the timing belt repair, they need to be replaced. The whole kit is, the whole timing belt kit with good SKF components is 230 euros. So it's really not that expensive. Another really big weak point is um, the AG, what the hell is that called? Up gas control? Exo exhaust gas regular, EGR, the EGR yeah. valve. Um, it Everybody has, understands. Yeah, the EGR valve, there are two installed, one on the left and one on the right cylinder bank, and they seize up after about 100 kilometers. And especially if the car is not driven a lot, the service manuals make a big fuss about it, on what you all have to remove, and, and it's a major job and stuff. It's not true. You can get those in and out almost without removing anything. Piece of cake. There's a YouTube video from a guy in New Zealand who replaces an AG, EGR valve. It's a funny video and how he does it it's basically a surgery where he goes in with a couple of ratchet extensions um, through the front and I duplicated this. You, you, need, uh, you need your girlfriend to help you with it to suspend some wires and stuff and it does work. It's a fun repair, easy to do and an EGR valve is about 100 euros. Then another thing, what breaks for sure and it breaks in a very, very bad moment is the rear door hatch. The, the lock, the electric lock of the lower door breaks, the cable rips off, and then you can't electrically open your rear hatch. Now, if you are on vacation and you got your trunk full and you don't have access from the inside because you got big stuff in there, you will need a pry bar or a sledgehammer. And it's gonna cause a lot of problems. So, you need kinda, you need to be the lucky guy to have it break when the car is empty. And then there's a good YouTube video on how to repair it. Um, then there is the turbocharger. It's actually the turbocharger linkage, which is not broken on this car yet. Um, because we don't have 230,000 kilometers on it, so we still got um, 25,000 to go before that linkage seizes up. And then the car goes in limp mode and it doesn't it doesn't drive right and there's also a YouTube video from a guy fixing that without body off he got the turbocharger out out of the vehicle without body off real impressive video how he does that I'm really looking forward to that repair hopefully not on vacation um, or during a vacation so I'm gonna duplicate exactly what he did. I'm gonna try to improve it because you know it's always easier when you've seen it once instead of having to figure it out all by yourself. Let's see what else I can think of. Maybe Vera remembers. What, what was what was broken? No, I don't know. But what hasn't broken yet is uh, the parking brake. Hasn't broken. The parking brake is due. Yeah. Now normally the parking brake somewhere goes bad after about I would say six years to 12 years and of course it breaks because most people actuate it absolutely every time they pull the key out of the ignition that the parking brake actually locks in automatically and it's a little electric brake controller with a motor and a gear set inside and a warm screw and stuff and it actuates cables so it's it's a lot of stuff every time you pull your ignition key actuate it and of course it will fail it's back there below below you know in the chassis all the way back there at the dirtiest and wettest possible spot under a vehicle so 
the easiest way to keep this thing alive, and that's what we've been doing now for many years, is to, to pull or push the lever of the parking brake actuator when we pull the ignition key off. So if this thing is due, there are a lot of good and funny videos um, on how to, how to fix that. There's that one video from a guy in the UK who fixes it on a rainy day and he, he sits underneath the vehicle all, you know, all up on jack stands and tries to get this thing figured out and he looks so desperate and his wife makes the video of him very, very funny. Can only recommend looking for that. Um, I think he's called We Are Big Kids, remember? Yeah. He's got 2,000 subscri subscribers, so that's a, that's a funny guy if he attracts 2,000 people watching his videos. So that one is not broken. This, we still got an original setup. We also didn't have any problems with the um, suspension system in terms of the air shocks. Many people have a lot of problems there, but I think we got around this so far, having only very, very randomly some very seldom some intermittent fault and I think it's one of the valve control modules and the reason is I've been cleaning the shocks rubber boots I've been watching out for the hoses that they don't rub and I've been not power washing the vehicle underneath where the valves are and so on okay it's a little tight here oh he knows how to do that yeah so we are still all original with our air suspension system. Already at six minutes. It's a long video, I think nobody will watch this. Yeah. So what else was broken, what we had to fix, what everybody else had to fix. Um, what engine repairs did we do? We did the rear timing belt. It's not really a timing belt from the function, but it's a timing belt from the belt type. It's running the high pressure diesel pump and it's in the rear of the engine okay. so it's a invisible repair you have to work with a mirror or a camera or just by taste taste that right word no by not feel. by taste by I feel, feel. you have to work oh, by f you, yeah you have to work by by feel and uh, to get that belt off and you lay down flat with your belly on the engine. I think it's a doable repair if you you know get your act together before starting it and follow the instructions on, on YouTube. Watch a couple of videos ahead of time, read the instructions manual from Hayes and so on. It's doable. Um, if this belt fails it's not a complete engine damage but it will stall and it will be very difficult to repair if you're out on vacation. Um, and if you go to a shop then again you are in the uh, couple thousand dollar range so that's a, a thing we did and then we did very 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 regular maintenance on it but we also had um, wheel bearing failure in the Pyrenees mountains in the Pyrenees yeah. yeah we had a wheel bearing fail that was probably our own fault but that was no problem oh. Das war das war's Radlack, ja. So, jetzt habt ihr mich so weit. <lacht> jetzt habt ihr dich so weit. Es ist doch schon wieder ruhig. Ich nicht mehr mit. And we ended up paying 380. 380 Euros, 380. And the spare part was only 180. And it was an original, a, a SKF. I, I found this acceptable. And when we got home, we got um, three additional wheel bearings, two more for the back, one more for the front, and we, we replaced all of them. And then we're safe there, and we also replaced with that repair um, whatever was necessary on the brakes. Um, it, it eats brakes. This car needs at least one set of brake pads every year. It's unbelievable. And I'm not buying the most expensive ones, so maybe it's because I'm cheap. But um, because it's so heavy, I think that's the reason it, it eats so many brakes. And again, you can get a set of brake pads for like 35 euros and you can get a disc brake 
one of them for 40 from a decent manufacturer from 45 you get one from ATF or um, you get a Bosch for 55 so it's cheap and everything is available like brake caliper repair kit I put in in the back one brake caliper in on the back axle locked up at one point and it was all glowing when I got home I felt it when I was walking by and the heat came off um, off the vehicle and it's a cheap and easy repair and I put in like nine euros to get the brake caliper repair kit and um, and then of course I put in new discs and new brake pads and easy so yeah. that is really nothing I think for such a big vehicle and, uh, yeah we got the manual transmission version it's still worn out here already um, it's only available up to a certain build year um, and I gotta say sometimes I miss an automatic transmission when I'm driving it through the city in dense traffic but overall the manual transmission fits so much better to this car no matter what everybody else says this car is not very powerful for its weight it's a slow car and Driving this with an automatic will always make it feel weak and you have to kick it versus driving it with that manual stick shift. It gives it that real Land Rover feel out of the 60s. It feels good to drive slow and shift manually and feeling that, feeling that six cylinder diesel engine much better. So we are very happy having that manual transmission and it is one thing we don't have to worry about failing a transmission. And there is a one kilometer stretch of gravel. I think it's the only stretch of gravel you can legally drive in Germany. Um, there's no other stretch left over and that's actually coming right here and it's not a hundred percent legal with this car because it has 1.5 ton restriction on it and this car is uh, I don't know 2.4 2.5 tons something like this now we are on gravel here um, unbelievable <laughs> So what else was broken? What did we have to fix over the years? I'm sure we forgot stuff. Okay, so now we're home. And uh, what do we do I wonder if we get more than 50 clicks on this video. This would be amazing. Another thing what really breaks on every car are the wheel lug nuts. Um, they rust on the inside this is like a sheet metal cover over them they rust on the inside and then they swell and then the socket don't fit and they need to be replaced you need 20 of them and they are quite costly now we also replaced the turbocharger hoses there are three in total and uh, one is really easy to get to the second one is a little more difficult and the third one is actually here below the wheel arch also possible from the side but the wheel got to come off and the jack it up and so on not a difficult repair all three hoses like uh, like 120 euros <laughs> 